What's up team? Welcome back to another episode of PUBG PS. I'm your host Brian Imrick and today we are not talking about the basics. We are drilling down and we're getting focused. Today's topic is flex spending accounts for dependent care. Not to be confused with flex spending accounts for health care. Now in the world of the tax code and taking advantage of the ridiculous amount of cost that it takes uh, to provide care for your little ones, there are two ways to benefit. One is the flex spending for dependent care account, which we're gonna be talking about today. And the second is the child care tax credit, which we'll dive into at another time. But first, to realize the tremendous benefit of one of these accounts, we need to lay the groundwork and understand how the federal tax system works. And when you hear, it puts me in another bracket, well, what the heck does that even mean? So let's start with the rough numbers. Now I say rough numbers. These are not the exact income amounts. I'm rounding. I don't have them memorized because frankly, it's not 1928. And I, like you, have software to do this for us. But from $0 to 19,400 worth of taxable income, you pay a tax rate of 10%. What that means is that the money you're earning between here and there gets taxed 10 cents on every dollar. You go out and earn a dollar, 10% of that, 10 cents is going to go to the federal government. From there, we have the next bracket. 19,400 goes up to roughly 78,000 dollars of income. That bracket pays tax at 12 percent. So the first 19 pays 10, the next 19 through 78 pays 12. Now this is under a married filing jointly tax bracket and when you get up to 78,000 between 78 and 168 we jump. You pay 22 percent on those dollars. So this means that you're in the 22% tax bracket, but it doesn't mean that all of your income was taxed at 22%. It just means that the amounts over 78,000 were taxed at 22%, not every dollar going all the way back to zero. So the, the brackets continue, but we're gonna stop there today for simplicity reasons. Now here's what happens when you're contributing to your flex spending account. You have your paycheck up here and over here is your flex spending account. The most that you can put into the account, this is for your whole household. You can't do one amount in husbands and one amount in wives or partners. The maximum that you can put in in any given year, this is for 2020, I'll timestamp that, is $5,000. So from your paycheck, you decide, I wanna put $5,000 in over the course of the next year. Open enrollment comes and you make that commitment. So before any of the money goes to you, that money per paycheck starts to flow into the flex spending account. What this does for your tax situation is it lowers your taxable income by $5,000. Now, why is that so cool? Why is Brian geeking out about this? Because if you're in the 22% income tax bracket, there's even more tax savings involved, all right? This is what I like to call quadruple tax-free, which means, do you pay federal taxes on this money? That's a big no. Do you pay state taxes on this money? That's a big no. And lastly, do you pay payroll taxes, which is Social Security and Medicare? And that's a big no, okay? So these add up, let's just make it instead of 22%, we'll make it an even 30%, which means you save 30% of that $5,000. You have 5,000 less income, which means it costs you 30% less in taxes, which means your flex spending benefits you to the tune of 1,500 bucks. You saved $1,500 in income taxes 
by doing one thing differently and diverting that money to the flex spending first instead of just having it come to you. Now there are requirements for you to be eligible for the flex spending account. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but essentially you have to be working and paying someone else for care. Your child has to be under 13 years of age. And if you are paying someone in order to get reimbursed, you usually need to have their social security number and their address. Now here's the first aha gotcha that I want to point out. Getting the 1500 bucks is great, but you need to realize from a cash flow standpoint that you're double paying for care throughout the course of the year until you get reimbursed from there. So let me say that a different way. Your money is going into the flex spending account, but at the end of the week, you still have to pay Sally. You still have to pay XYZ Child Care Center. But the money hasn't been passed back to you yet. So you're paying twice for that $5,000 in care. Now what a lot of people will do is they'll submit a reimbursement once a quarter. Even more people just do it once a year. They look at their household flow and they go, we're doing okay. So every January we're gonna submit and get a $5,000 lump sum out of the dependent care account and we're gonna use that for whatever the heck we want. Either to put in the bank to pay for next year's child care, or we're gonna use it to go on a vacation, whatever it, it may be. Now another tip to keep in mind is that when I first thought of this, I framed it in the context of little kid child care. But the dependent care account can actually be used to pay for day camps when your child is older, but not when they're past 13 years old. Now it can't be a sleepaway camp, but if you know every year they have this camp and this camp, and while they're there, I get to go to work, it's $1,000, fantastic. You sign up to put $1,000 into your flex spending account for that year. We're gonna stop it here. This is focused, but not super deep. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for joining us.